What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with a look at the new Warhammer Age of Sigmar starter set. Today we're going to take a look at some of the Chaos miniatures that come in here, specifically, you know, the Cornate ones. These guys are really cool looking, obviously very well detailed. You know, we haven't seen stuff like this, you know, in, in recent times. It's amazing looking stuff. And, you know, it's not just like the starter two-part two, two part push fit models. These models are actually, you know, pretty well detailed for being, you know, straight out of... A starter box you know they, they expect you to uh, actually hobby on these things a little bit as you can see I'm going to kind of show you some of the instructions here like how these guys go together and it's uh, you know it's really interesting to see that uh, you know it's it's really good looking stuff in my opinion we haven't seen anything like this in 40k and if these are just the starter models so to speak I can't wait to see the actual models that come out hopefully third or fourth or fourth wave uh, for this new uh, release of the Age of Sigmar. So first off, we got the Lord, the, you know, the mighty Lord of Corn. He is, uh, he's pretty cool looking. He's the guy holding the, the flesh hound, the new plastic flesh hound looking dude. Obviously, he has a cool cape, you know, this this really cool top standard here, awesome looking axe. And you can see from the, you know, from the pictures, he's, he's not just push fit. Like, you have to do some hobbying on this guy. You know, same with his little hound uh, guy right here. And then he actually attaches the hand right there off to the side. And then you start getting into things like uh, the standard bear guy here. He's pretty much, <clears throat> he's huge. Look at that standard. That thing is way bigger than it looks. Trust me, and you'll see in a minute when I show you the actual sprues themselves. Then you've got, you know, his extended vertebrae here and there's the awesome looking kind of ax mace. Crazy looking stuff. I mean, stuff that we haven't seen in normal models yet, much less starter, you know, models themselves. Then you got the blood stroker, which is basically the guy kind of in charge of the this particular uh, Korgrath uh, that, you know, it's just like basically like a cross between a Dreadnought and a Demon Prince. It's kind of this big Billy Badass kind of monster. You can see here, you know, there's obviously some computer elements here where they basically slice it down, slice it up, slice it all around and just get it, kind of get it in there and, you know, just basically put it together. And it's obviously well detailed. I mean, you can tell, you know, there's obviously some room for conversions and things like that, but it's just a great looking model in my opinion, you know, really cool looking stuff. Then you get the Blood Warriors, which are, to me, remind me of Corn Berserkers. Again, not just, you know, two parts. You got this part here. Some of them have their heads already attached, and then you got the two different arms. You know, some of them are a little bit more simpler, like this guy is just basically uh, two part, but then you got you know, more guys that are a little bit more simpler. But for the, the rank and file troops, they seem to be still pretty well detailed and obviously, you know, a little bit more challenging than just a two part front and back, you know, kind of, you guys might remember the, the old space being starter from, you know, the 2000, or shoot, the 1990s, where it was just like, basically a space marine standing there and you kind of push the bolter into his chest, like him holding the bolter just kind of at ease. And those were kind of cool for their time, but you know, when you consider it 20 years later, yeah, we should be here, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is, this is the kind of level we're at. So very cool looking stuff. You got the blood warriors and then you get into the blood reavers, which are, you know, very much like the marauders of old uh, Warhammer fantasy chaos warriors faction there. So really cool looking stuff. There's all the models, you know, kind of like a little showcase of kind of everything you get in here. I believe it's 29 different models for the Warband of Corn, and then you get 17, I believe it is more, for the Forces of Good, the Sigmarites. So not quite as many, but you know, quality over quantity, etc., etc. So let's take a closer look at the Corny models because they are kind of, um, they're really what I feel. You know, I'm a Chaos player at heart. So we've got these two great sprues here now. So, you know, in all honesty, just to let you know, two of the sprues in here are duplicated. So the starter set comes with five sprues and five big sprues. Like this is, um, I snapped them in half to show you the chaos ones. So two of them are actually identical. As you can see here, these are actually identical. So you've got the blood reavers right here. Now some of these are blood reavers. Some of these are actually the, the blood warriors. Like this right here is a blood warrior, blood warrior. You know, you can tell the higher, the more higher detailed stuff is a blood warrior kind of depending. Uh, be very careful, you know, follow the instructions because these guys, <laughs> they got a lot of parts and you want to make sure you put them together correctly. But that's the bulk of the forces is these two sprues uh, right here, which is, uh, you know, kind of really, really cool, really neat to see. And I meant to do it like that. There it is. So really cool to see that they got the technology. They could save a little bit by duplicating a sprue and still making it work. So kudos to Games Workshop. Here is the next sprue. This is kind of like the command upgrade sprue. So you've got the standard bear here, and then he's got his extra blades right there to form the mace. His extended vertebrae kind of thing, part of the 
uh, the horn standard bearer right here kind of plugs in there more vertebrae head so there's still some familiar design elements like heads and things like that that are swappable in case you want to you know go the 40k route and like I said in the introductory video uh, to this series that you know you can take a risk on this like even if you don't think the, the, the game's gonna pan out get a couple guys together pick up some starters if it doesn't pan out you know you can use these models to convert to say chaos or say space rings for the other guys you know have a cool little hobby project because or trade them off to some other people in your game group because let's be honest some people aren't gonna bite on this and if you have the models you have leverage so, so to speak sometimes because there's gonna be some haters depending on what store you're at but it, it would definitely behoove you you know to at least try it and have some fun you know play those games with your opponent not against your opponent and obviously this is designed to have some fun so I feel like you can have fun converting you can have fun you know even if it doesn't pan out you can convert these guys over to 40k whatever you know there's so many different opportunities here this just isn't a standalone that would just die on its own and you'd have no recourse if it you know didn't catch in your area so at least that's really neat I feel like over on this side of sprue you've got parts of the actual lord himself you know the little leash for the bloodhound here or the flesh hound rather and this is obviously the best looking flesh hound we've ever seen from them I mean the, the ones that are out now the fine cast ones look like stupid lizard lizard men demon things that have been you know sculpted 30 years ago and I'm not a fan of them I mean they're cool to have if you got the models hey awesome but tell you what if I had the option to have these give me all of these all day I am a 40k fat kid I want them all then the uh, super duper sprue right here this is gonna have all your cool stuff on it like you've got the, basically the rest of um, the important parts for like the blood um, the blood warriors themselves then you've got the Korgorite, or excuse me, the Korgorath uh, model, like the front and the halves and all the different pieces that go together, the arms and the different things, and the claws that go on the end of the arms. Then you got the standard, or the, excuse me, the little banner. Uh, one's holding the banner for the Blood Reavers, and the other one, uh, there's one on the back of the... Uh, the Lord guy that's on the other sprue so you've got lots of different options here for things to do obviously make sure you follow the instructions because they are this, these things are spread out all over the sprue I mean you got parts for the, a blood reaver right here next to a blood warrior and you know if you have any background uh, actually putting together the what was it the dark vengeance box set you know that you know <laughs> there might be chaos guys on one sprue and you know dark angels on the other and just kind of like whatever wherever they could fit them in they just kind of they just just kind of did it I feel like and you know it's it's really cool looking models I mean just this right here you know we haven't seen anything like this in, in quite a while I feel like and it's really cool to see that um, you know them to kind of just come through with this kind of quality uh, of miniatures and you get you know you get the whole other half of the all the the stormcast guys you know um, the eternal faction and it's it's just really neat to see some really good stuff let me show you some of the shots of we're gonna do a different video on the actual rule book itself, but I wanted to show you uh, kind of some of how these guys actually look, you know, all painted up and things. So there's the uh, the Korgoraths, zoom, zoom out for you here. Now obviously there's a, new, there's a new style, and I'll explain all this in the next video when we go over uh, the rules and things like that. There's the Blood Warriors and the Blood Reavers, and some action shots of them here going running into battle against what looks like uh, some skeletons there and then of course you got the war scroll battalions so there is they call them battalions i mean uh, contemporary term is formations what some of us 40k players are used to and things like that so you got the battalions and then you got their war scrolls to kind of give you an idea there's the mighty lord there's the standard bearer the blood secretor i guess he's the secretary of of the blood the bloodings and that's all the miniatures right there and then of course there's you know tons of good fluff in here about oh and I wanted to show you too just real quick how to paint these guys now this is really interesting uh, that they kind of show you some of the paint schemes in here and give you a basic idea how to paint because obviously they're selling a hobby with this book so that's really good to see now you got two ways to go about this you could get all super crazy like if you're all going home you want to paint all 29 of your of your chaos miniatures you can do all of these steps here and they lay it out pretty good and give you you know step-by-step -step instructions or you can just do the first two steps stop here when you get your base coats done right and get that army painter dip and what's cool about the army painter dip is you know there's two different ways to do it you can obviously take the model and just dip it in the pot of basically it's like a 
a proprietary wax mix that's similar to Minwax, but you know, it's a it's, it's a little bit more proprietary components because it's made to work with miniatures and basically flow throughout the model itself and not be quite as ridiculous. I found personally that if you take a large flat chiseled brush, and I actually happen to have one right up here, that what happens is if you get a nice wide flat chiseled brush similar to this right here. This is a old, I guess the last series of Citadel brushes. If you actually dip this in whatever color you decide to go with, if you got a lot of bright colors here, you might want to go with like, uh, see it starts to get like kind of a darker tone here. You might want to go with like a darker dip. You basically put this into your dip, your army painter dip, and they sell them now in dropper bottles as well as the cans for 30 bucks. You probably don't need a whole can for just this much stuff. But basically you just put this in, you, you get the, you get the army painter stuff on here, and then literally just like this, like pretending this was the model, you starting at the top, you know, going to the bottom, you basically just do this and let it let the the water the dip itself get all over the model now it's not going to be perfect and you, you might have to kind of dab dab off a spot or two here and there kind of like that but what i found is that's a really good way to do it no mess no fuss you're not spinning dipping shaking flipping you know bopping twisting whatever whatever you want to call it and making a big mess but let me tell you what just doing these two steps and doing some army painter dip way quicker than doing all of this now, if you just start out, that's great. Even if you're not, you know, that's another option. If you want to do up, you know, just your your chaos lord the, all the way and actually detail them out so he looks different, you know, lower level characters. That's pretty cool stuff too. So just keep that in mind if you're starting up the hobby or if you just want to get your stuff painted and on the tabletop like super quick because everybody's bound to be playing Age of Sigmar and everybody wants the new miniatures to go into their existing armies because remember you can do that as long as they're different war scrolls you can actually have two different you know uh, quote-unquote factions in your army so really cool stuff there that's a look at the new cornate miniatures for the age of sigmar in the starter box set there i hope you enjoyed my little overview we're going to do uh one more on the actual uh, the stormclad faction and then we'll do one on the book itself because there's a lot going on with this and people seem very interested in what's going on and i cannot uh get it all into one video so we're gonna break it up a little bit there guys so thanks for watching uh make sure you stay in the trenches subscribe to this youtube channel check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and of course head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos become a veteran of the long war today